What's up nerds and welcome to a fun comparison video. We are comparing Carl's Bait and Tackle, otherwise known as Casual Online Tackle Store, to your local tackle shop. And I am comparing this specifically to my local tackle shop. You guys let me know in the comments, do you prefer to shop online? Do you prefer to go into the tackle shop and actually pick the stuff off the shelves for yourself? I know where I stand and I'll tell you in this video and then you guys tell me in the comments below. And of course, welcome back to the channel. This is Burley Fishing, where we do all sorts of stuff like this, unboxings, go out fishing, and review tons and tons of stuff. That's a blast and if you guys like content like that, be sure to subscribe, smash the like, ring the notification bell, and come back for our new live podcast, which drops very, very soon. It's called Aggressively Average Anglers. Come join us live for our first episode and listen wherever you listen to podcasts. So let's get to this comparison. In this quarter, we've got Carl's Bait and Tackle, a massive online tackle store. And then we've got, in this other corner, My Local Tackle Shop. And I want you to picture yours as we go through this. My Local Tackle Shop is called Newtson's. It is located in Brooklyn, Michigan. Not New York. Middle of nowhere, Michigan, actually. Very much the opposite of the Brooklyn you're thinking of. And this shop is amazing. It's got some hidden gems. It's got tons and tons of really old stuff, locally made stuff. It's awesome. I just went there today. They were having a pretty massive sale. It was really cool. So shout outs to the folks over at Newtson's. And again, I want you thinking about like what it feels like walking through a tackle shop and being able to look at just walls and walls of tackle and try to pick out your own things based on your interests for the day and how you're feeling versus scrolling through a website as long as you have to until you find exactly what you're looking for. And it may be out of stock, which is also frustrating. So let's start out with Carl's Bay and Tackle. Okay. So at Carl's, I got five plastics, two hard baits, and I got two pieces of terminal tackle and one tool. So the total I spent, and again, as a reminder, this is not a financial comparison here as far as what I got. It's just, what does it feel like in this shopping situation versus that shopping situation? So the total I spent at Carl's was 60 bucks. So let's get into it. We'll do what we normally do. We start off the top with the hard baits. Number one, I had to get one of these. I don't have any of these for whatever reason, but I see all my friends and awesome fisher peoples out there rocking these. So we got the Berkeley Stunna. This is a 112 size jerk bait. And I got it in a color that I don't have a ton of, which is called Northern Lights. It's a half ounce jerk bait, slow sinking, and it dives to about three to six feet, which is like my go-to. Now, as opposed to Paul, Paul likes like the two treble jerk baits, smaller jerk baits. I actually like the 110s, the 112s, etc. Actually, like the smallest I usually throw is the 106, which is from Six Cents. First of all, packaging, a little difficult to open here, but that's fine. It's actually like a translucent purple and green chartreuse, really, which is awesome. I'm digging the color. Oh my God, these hooks are really sticky and sharp, which is good. Right off the top, love the shape of this bait. This is awesome. Uh, looks very well made, which I would expect nothing less from Berkeley. Got a really nice lip there for that three to six foot diver. As I said, these trebles are upgraded. These are really nice trebles. They're like the exact right size for this bait, which makes total sense. These guys know what they're doing. Very sharp, very sticky, and it's got that little sweet back there easier to keep fish pinned. I think this is gonna be a good change up as compared to the normal stuff I throw. Down here on the bottom, you actually have your length, you got your stunna there, and this is a chartreuse belly. Got translucent throughout, and then this dark color up top with a little bit of flake in there, so it's got that flash and then that translucent purple throughout. This is a beautiful jerk bait. I can't wait to fish it. Got a nice heavy thud to it. It's got a good balance. You can see actually the balancing weights throughout. There's one, there's another one, and then you got the ball right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this thing's nice. I love it. It's actually almost jerkbait season already in Michigan. It is September. It is about to be fall. And gosh dang, do I love jerkbait fishing. Let's do it. Okay, next up, I don't know anything about these because I've never used them, but this is the Hummer from Guggen Squad. I figure it's a great thing to review. Lots of you guys use Guggen, we use Guggen, and why not? I also, surprisingly enough, do not have a lot of buzz baits. Probably got about a uh, half dozen or so. And I don't have any in this like darker colorway. So this is actually black with blue flake. If you can see that flash there, this is three eighths of an ounce. And I got that way because then I can burn it and I can kind of kill it. Just pause it and get it back on plane pretty quickly with that lighter weight. So I like that. And that's assuming that this thing runs really well. Out of the box, we got Pretty smooth moving parts here, so that looks good. Got your little line stay wrap there so we don't have our line sliding up or down, which is good. And got a nice stout hook off the bottom. And like I said, you got this black with a little bit of flash to it, which I like. Nice skirt to it, which is hand tied. 
impressive. I am excited to fish this thing. Uh, you also got your weight down there at the bottom as well, which is crucial. I kind of like that. Gold blade to this bad boy, and you got the little Guggen print sign right there. Really good looking bait. I like it. I don't have anything like this as far as my buzz baits go, so I'm gonna use it before summer's over very quickly. So from there, we got tools and terminal. I needed to load up on some hooks. So we got some three odds from Gamakatsu. Why not? You get a little five pack here. Love Gamakatsu hooks. They are fantastic. And these are the right size for what I fish. Like this is great for not only like flukes, but finesse worms, trick worms, all that stuff, and uh, smaller size cross. So I'm gonna be using this thing a lot for Texas rigs and fluking as the summer kind of fades off, and then we'll move into more finesse season. And because I never have enough of these things because they just disappear on me, we got some drop shot weights. Heavy metal tungsten, I've never used this brand of drop shot. I've used heavy metal tungsten for a few different things. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I also wasn't like against it. It was just fine. So we'll test these babies out, but just tube style, my favorite style of drop shot. We got lots of grass and all the lakes I fish. This is kind of perfect for that. And you got the little pinch weight there. It is silver versus like the green or the opaque colors. I'm fine with that. I think it'll do great. Also a little bit shorter. It's kind of like short and stocky and these are 3 16ths of an ounce. I'm used to like my Wu Tungsten ones are a little bit of the longer style. This I'm excited about. We got a little line cutters multi-tool here. This is called the Dual Hybrid Micro Scissor. And these are pretty cool. So I saw these at iCast. I've seen them a lot since. Seen a lot of guys using them. I just never got to it. First of all, it's got a clip on the back. So you can just slide it up on your hat like that, which is pretty neat. So it's always where I need it and I can just slip it back up pretty quickly. So that's nice. Could also put it onto my life jacket, which is probably where it's gonna live because I don't really like looking at it out of the corner of my eye or whatever, but it'll be there. So it's very close to me, very easy to use. We've got scissors. I don't know how well they cut, let's find out. Always gotta test your gear. So we've got some pretty light braid here. Let's just go for it, eh? <laughs> awesome. So pretty nice little snips there that we've got. And on the back, you've got that standard like ceramic blade that line cutters is known for. So I should be able to take my line here. Oh my goodness. It's harder with the short line and just pull it right through. So that's neat. And that's double sided as well. So you've got both sides of that that you can use. And then you got the snips. You also got a spot where we can just leash this thing. Also probably a great idea. Going to use that. Very cool tool. Last up, we got plastics right off the top. This is for buzz baits as well as even on its own. But we've got the goat toad. I love these. These are awesome. And this color it's a very special color near and dear to my heart. This is copper truce, which I think is a pretty rad color I've never really thrown on top. So look at that. So we got the goat toads, the little flanges coming off the back. These kicky feet are, first of all, indestructible. Second of all, they have a ton of action. Look at that. We got that bright chartreuse belly. Look at all that copper flake throughout. These things are indestructible. This is going to catch a heck ton of fish. I'm excited about it. I do already have these in black and black on top is fantastic. Uh, I'll probably also get them in white, but I figured I'd just pick these up. This is the only color that Carl's actually had in the Goat Toads as well as many other baits. It was very restrictive. Uh, so going back to online versus in store, I didn't have any problem finding stuff in stock in the store today. I had a lot of trouble trying to get stuff and have had for the past six to eight months with Carl's. You know, obviously there's a lot going on and it makes sense, but it can be frustrating, right? So I'm on there, I'm like, yes, I need these. Need them in white. Oh, they're out. Well, they've been out for a long time, or at least I haven't been able to get a hold of them, but there you go. Let's go toads, love them. Here's another bait I'm really excited about. We've got the X Zone, their new drop shot, new er. It's called the Hot Shot Minnow. So this came out, I believe, this year. It's a 3.25 inch drop shot plastic. I love drop shot fishing. You guys see me do it all the time. Paul does it all the time. It just works really well up here. So I picked out two colors that I think are gonna bang. One, we got bass candy, which we'll take a look at. And then two, what really never lets me down is like a pearl or a white. So nice shiny white there. Again, they were kind of limited on colors, so I didn't have too much of a choice, but it worked out because I like both of these colors. So here's that bass candy. As you'd expect, there's purple and green and gold flake in there. Look at that flash, gosh dang. These feel pretty durable. It's definitely not a Laztec, you know, Mule, Z-Man, Nico Bates, things like that. They last forever. This isn't gonna last forever, but it's got some decent durability. Look how thin that tail is to this heavier end. So this should move a ton. It should have a ton of action in it. Definitely gonna be nose hooking these. 
on a finessier drop shot hook that I picked up from the tackle store, not from Carl's Bait and Tackle. So we're gonna be using that. Awesome color, excited to use it, very unique and cool looking drop shot bait. Here's the white, just so you can get a look at that as well. Nice, shiny, opaque white. This always gets bit up here. One of my favorite drop shots to throw right now is the Mule Fishing Minnow in the bigger size, three inches and in white catches the most for me. White chartreuse, Dakota Sunrise, all fantastic colors. Then we go to something that is a technique I've recently gotten into and is a newer bait for this year, and that is the Guggen Dart. Got this in two sizes, just cause. I prefer the smaller size of the Fluke. That's what gets bit the most for me. Maybe it's different for you. And of course, because of that, I grabbed this giant one. Maybe I'll catch a gosh dang giant. Got two different colors here. Number one is natural, one of my favorite colors from Guggen, period, the end for Michigan. And number two, one of my second favorite colors from Guggen, which is the white pearl shad. Shad? Shad. There we go. So let's take a look at these up close. I've never had these in hand. Uh, number one, gigantic clamshell packaging. Okay. You guys know how we feel about that. Not the biggest fan. It has a purpose, obviously. It's just annoying when you're trying to pack a bunch of stuff into a kayak. So here's the bigger size. This is the six inch dart. Look at that tail, dude. I'm expecting it not to have a lot of durability, okay? But I am expecting it to have a ton of action, which is what I'm used to at this point with Guggen stuff. Like they usually have great scent, uh, tons of action, easy to rig, easy to fish, catch a lot of fish, they fall apart, absolutely just demolish themselves. But look at this, that is a really awesome color, really well made. That opaque white up top, translucent, clearish with silver flake on the bottom. And look at that tail. So a little fork tail that is vertical. And that should give us some really good darting action. Get, we get, all right, I'll see myself out, I'm sorry. It's gonna be great action. I can't wait to fish this thing. It is pretty huge as far as stuff I fish in Michigan. It's pretty big. Definitely gonna have to use my 5 ot EWG hooks to fish this thing, but that's fine. I got a ton of them and it should be a lot of fun. First look, I like it. It always comes down to how it does on the water. Second option we got in the dart is that natural. So. It's a green pumpkin, blue flake, and silver combination. I love this color. For whatever reason, it's bit a ton up here, probably because we have a lot more clear stain to slightly clear water, and it just pops. That blue flake, green pumpkin blue is like another fantastic color up here, but add that silver in and you are golden. That thing is money. This is the five inch. Little more of a, the size I wanna be throwing out here. This is one of my favorite fluke sizes to throw. Usually throwing lots of zoom flukes in about this size. So I know it's gonna do well. And again, I'm excited to just see how the action is on the water. I can't wait. Okay, so that is everything from Carl's Bait and Tackle. To recap, ordering from an online company unless they're tackle warehouse and even if they're tackle warehouse, you're gonna deal with a lot of out of stocks and you don't know when it's coming back into stock and you can sign up for an email alert and it's just kind of annoying. If you know a guy who knows a guy who knows a gal at a local tackle shop, you might be able to get it even faster or they'll just have it in stock. And if they don't have what you want in stock, they've got other things you can see right away. One of the annoying things about shopping online is you always have to like dig into the site to try to find stuff that you think you want. When you're browsing the store, you're like, oh yeah, I did need that versus going through every category. Maybe you guys are like me. On Carl's Bait and Tackle, I go to every category and I just scroll and I'm like, do I need that? Do I need that? Do I need that? I try to come with a list. I'm usually prepared and it just never ends up that way, right? So I do enjoy it. Obviously you got shipping and then you got to wait for it to ship to you. So you guys let me know, like you're a fan of the online tackle store or what we're going to look at next, which is the in-store situation, your local tackle shop. So I spent $140 at this local tackle shop, but I got a lot of cool stuff. And some of it was like more expensive line and tools, whatnot, but I did get some cool baits. Let's get into it. And just think about the variety that I'm about to show you. Okay, there's a pretty good variety here. First two things off the top. One, I haven't seen on an online store in a while, and maybe somebody's still selling these things. It's something that I thought was a total gimmick, but I actually have caught some freaking tanks on and genuinely enjoy fishing. It's pretty fun to fish, especially if you do it the right way, and will catch a lot of fish, but is a goofy as heck bait. And that is this one right here, the 13 Fishing Motorboat. Do they even make these? I think they still make these. And I had one that was like the, uh, like a white lightning type color, that like white translucent silver flake type color, and it died on its own in my tackle box. It just murked itself. It was real weird, don't know what happened. It was just some sort of like chemical misalignment. Is that a thing? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so I saw this. They ain't cheap. They're like nine bucks. But 
This is a really cool bait. You got the little buzz bait tail, look at that, off the end. And you rig this weedless. It's also made of Elastec type material, so it is indestructible unless it melts itself. So keep it away from other things, it doesn't play nicely. Oh yeah, just like I remember. So I opted for like a darker flashy color. We got some silver, golden blue flake in there. It very flashy. This is a very flashy color. I, I like that because I want to mimic bluegill on top. So I think this would do a pretty good job of that. Even versus the white, this would be great. Comes pre-rigged. All you got to do is thread the hook back in, expose it if you will, or bury it because it is a Laztec and it's going to last a long time. This tail, this stays in there really good. There's actually like a, a line that goes way up here to the hook and that is not gonna come off. Like it's attached to the hook. So you're good to go. This is gonna spin for a long time. This is completely weedless. So the best luck I had in this was throwing it into the nastiest looking sloppy pad section. And I'm gonna do that this weekend. I'm excited to try it out again. And just run it through, burn it along the top. It floats. Unlike a buzz bait, you don't have to burn it the whole time. You can just kill it all over the place. It works really well. I love these. And a lot of guys think it's a straight up gimmick. I also like the Lunker Hunt Spider and a lot of guys hate that. So, hey, I'm here for it. I get it if you're not, um, but I dig this. And as soon as I saw it hanging on a shelf randomly in the corner of this place, I had to buy it. Don't let it touch anything. The next thing that I literally got as a joke is the most expensive thing I bought today. It's $15. So it might've been silly to get this, but I just needed to know. I know it exists. You guys know how we feel about Lunker Hunt. It's 50-50 for us, pretty much. I love the spider. I hate most of their topwaters. I'm probably gonna hate this one. And if anything, it's probably gonna live the rest of its life over on this shelf over here, and that's fine. You'll see it in my podcast. The Skitter Lizard. Oh my gosh, have I heard so many okay and mostly negative things about this. So we're gonna go test it, because I need to know for myself. That's really the only reason I bought it. Look at this thing. I haven't even touched it yet. I don't even know how it feels. We're gonna get into it, but look at that. So we got like this bullfroggy color. Let's take a look inside. Oh no, it is just straight up hollow body slash like that weird foam material they use. If it's dragonfly material, it's going to melt by itself. It also has a stinger hook. Look at that. So we've got up front, it's a two piece bait, right? Look at that line, very pronounced line. A little LH on the side. So we're gonna tie up here. We got basically a frog at the front. Frog hooks, I like how they kind of taper inward. I like that a lot. They're sharp, they're pretty good, pretty stout. And then coming out the back, we've got this tail made of a different, really weird material that I really don't like. And the tail curls up like that. This is a very thin section here. And this should be moving like crazy on the water, kind of like a trailer. We got the feet that should also move as well. And if history, proves itself again, are probably gonna get ripped off immediately after my first couple catches. And that is why these arms are also another piece. That's not, it's not a part of this. It's a separate piece. So this should be fun. Um, I just need to see the action. Again, assuming I don't lose it, it's probably gonna live on my shelf forever, unless, unless it catches an absolute giant, which is still possible. It does have a stinger hook. Now, contrary to everybody's belief here, hold off on stinger hooks. We posted an Instagram reel slash TikTok that like did really well and a YouTube short. And we kept getting comments like, uh, no thanks. I don't want to put a stinger hook on my frog. You took something weedless and made it weed full. And that's not actually true. If you've ever used a stinger hook on your frog, it doesn't hang up on everything. If you have pads that have risen above the water, like your water level dropped and they're just hanging out up there. Yeah, you're probably going to catch on that. Are you going to catch on logs that you run over with your frog? No. Are you going to catch on slop? I mean, everything kind of gets slopped up anyways. You're not like you're using popping frogs in there either. So you're going to just denounce all popping frogs. I'm ranting. So I'm going to come back now. Uh, <laughs> this is not going to get hung up. And it looks like, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. You you can kind of bury it. So like if something comes up and chomps this, like it's, it's weedless now. If something comes up and chomps this, I bet that just busts through probably ruins the bait. I'm going to just not do that at first, at least. If it starts getting hung up, I'm going to do that. But I would assume once you get bit, like this thing is going to help you get a lot more catches, which is cool. That's what we're here for, right? That's what I'm here for. Again, weird bait, excited to use it. Okay, next thing I picked up is an old man bait. And I don't have any that aren't totally rusted out because they're actually from my old man. So I wanted a new one. We picked up the MEPS and it's called the Comet Minnow. By the way, 
We posted like a picture of this. Paul has one. It was just in his hand. He got like 2,500 likes for random reasons on Instagram. So that was neat. Uh, I love this bait though. It's really cool. You got a little minnow trailing behind a MEPS. MEPS are absolutely killer baits. Fantastic. One of my favorites. I am taking it out of the box. It's not a rare item. Uh, and I'm gonna fish it. By the way, one of the cool things about this tackle shop, again called Newtons in Brooklyn, Michigan, shout outs, is that they actually have like classic baits, actually the originals, like old baits. They've got really old plastics in there too that are kind of just falling apart. Um, but stuff you just can't find anywhere else which I'm like, yes, please, that's awesome. They also carry a bunch of JDM stuff and a bunch of rare items. And I mean, they cost a pretty penny. They also have some fantastic reels and rod selection. Anyways, they got all sorts of stuff. But look at this thing. This is a number two. That would be my go-to for this specific bait. It might even be too heavy, um, but I like the number two and number threes. Those are usually my go-to maps. You're gonna have this spinning blade that is extremely well balanced. A lot more weedless than you would think. Does not get hung up nearly as much. That said, this is a little different than the normal standard treble hanging off the back of your maps here. We've got two trebles set up, one buried in here, and then one out the back tail. This is not like the most durable fish, but it's gonna hold up a pretty long time, and it just looks cool. So you get that flash, kind of like a school of bait fish, and it's gonna look like a nice, easy snack for a bass, and they will come up and munch this. Fantastic bait, 10 out of 10, would recommend. You should try these if you haven't used them before, especially in rivers and when the bait fish are going crazy. Real quick terminal we picked up. I actually picked up two EWG sizes I don't have. So one, we've got some one aughts. Don't usually keep a lot of these in stock, but I really love this for finesse applications. These are owner hooks. Owner hooks are fantastic. So picked up a nice little pack of those, five of them. Those are gonna do damage, especially if you wanna rig up like a tiny child rig, which is like a Ned rig inverted with a nail weight in it. Never used it. It is indestructible. It doesn't hang up on anything. It's amazing, highly recommended. And then I actually thought these were drop shot hooks and I was like talking to Paul at the tackle store and I didn't even pay attention, I just grabbed these. But these are the Gamakatsu size two G-Lock worm hooks. These are microscopic EWGs, a size two EWG. I am glad I picked these up on accident. I do not have, of course, any EWGs this size, but I very much look forward to fishing these. Next two things are two furs. I got one for Paul, one for me. So I'm just gonna show you one of them, but I bought two. It's also why this was so much more expensive than it should have been, because this added about 40 bucks for Paul. So when it works out, I mean, I spent uh, not quite the same as I did online at Carl's Bait Tackle, but not that much. I picked up some four pound test fluorocarbon. I had to go with Seaguar Red Label. Heard good things about it, wanted to use it. He was looking for something different than he's used normally and he's out. So I was like, you don't have a lot of options. And also I'll try it too. So you can't be like, you bought me something terrible. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be great. 200 yards, about 14 bucks. That one's mine, you can't have it, nerd. Awesome, excited for that. The next thing I picked up was something I've been thinking about for a while, especially for wacky rigging and Nico rigging. Anytime you wanna throw a band or like a little O-ring over your worms. I mean, the O-ring's fine. I do find that they tend to like break down, especially like plastics that are built for action, not durability. It will literally just bind them in half over time. And it's just not as fun to use that applicator. So I found this. This is the VMC crossover pliers. How do you... This is the worst type of packaging. The cardboard is just over this plastic interior. I hate it. Zero out of 10 stars. Would not recommend. How do I get said pliers? Soon to be mine. There we go. It's got a little spring in it right? So you can press the band out and then slide your worm into this little like recessed area there. That's pretty cool. And then let go, slide her on out. That's why it's tapered. You need specific bands for this. I went for the bigger size because uh, talking to Paul, we really want to use this for wacky rigging applications. This also means that with this special type of band, which ain't cheap, uh, these are the crossover rings. You can get a couple different sizes. These are the eight millimeters designed for Stick worms, Senkos, right? Got it in green pumpkin. It's got a little hook spot up top. Hopefully I don't shoot this off into the nether worlds. But there you go, so look at that. So you got this little hook spot there. So that's where your hook goes, rather than through the worm. And as you can see, you just kind of squeeze, squeeze here, right? And that band opens up, so you can easily slide that worm through, let go, slide it off, you're rigged. I'm excited for this, this is gonna be cool. And if you guys have used this before and had success, let me know in the comments below. Okay, last three things we got were plastics that I've never used or seen. Well, 
I've seen these, just not use this color. Okay, first up, I don't know how I've never happened across these, but these are the Zero Z2s from Strike King, and they are an Elastec material. This is like a Strike King Z-Man crossover, something I didn't know I needed in my life that I totally need. This could be a Finesse Fluke. Throw on my one eye EWG over there, and it also, it's called the Baby Z2. Boom, down there. And it also could be a great drop shot. It's a fork tail fluke that is two inches, that's two. Got a five pack, smoky shad's a color, fantastic color, one of the best colors there is. Obviously you can throw it on a jig head too, all sorts of stuff, right? So we got our little fork tail for action down here at the end. But look how little this guy is. What? That's awesome. So we're in a finesse situation. I wanna throw a fluke. They're being finicky, they're not going after the bigger size flukes. You huck this baby out or you slap this on a drop shot, you're gonna catch them. And that's usually what happens when I resort to finesse. I'm pumped about it. Next up is white lightning colored trick shots from Z-Man. You guys know this as, if not my favorite, one of my favorite drop shot baits of all time. This is just the best. And I had to get it in a slightly different color. So mostly I have black uh, Twilight, which is their morning dawn and then copper truce. And those are like the ones that get bit the most for me. I do not have any variations on white. So here we have mostly clear with silver flake. I think this thing is gonna pop. Again, indestructible drop shot is Wonderful, very salty just there. Uh, and then you got your little paddle tail off the end. Cool. I just never see this color in stock wherever I shop. And last time I was on Carl's, none of these were in stock. They just stopped carrying these, it looked like, the trick shots. I did pick them up from Tackle Warehouse, which you'll see in like a week in another unboxing. And finally, we got one more. Uh, <laughs> when I saw these, had to have them. So this, it's called the Helgi from Lunker City. Lunker City, legendary company makes amazing baits, was gonna pick up some of their flukes, but I was like, I already spent a million dollars, I'm gonna stop now before I get in major trouble. I saw this, first of all, it looks copper truce-ish. Uh, so it's green pumpkin, purple flake with chartreuse, and it's a three inch perfect finesse Ned size. Look at this thing, what? These are so cool. Definitely built to go out on a jig head, like a Ned. Look at the tail up here, this is crazy. So when I need to downsize, and by the way, I just wanna point it out, Nico Bates just dropped a new Helgramite size. So if you love Helgramites that are indestructible, go check these out. This is not indestructible. Really cool colorway. Love the chartreuse, green pumpkin, purple flake. It's gonna pop in the waters I fish. It is going to absolutely smash. And I'm gonna throw it on a lighter, finesse, probably open hook, Ned head. I think this would be great. Maybe even a finesse bullets from Z-Man. Make it absolutely weedless and just huck it up in the dirty stuff. I am digging this bait. This is really cool. One of the coolest baits I've seen in a long time. I love it. I can't wait to get it out in the water. All right, guys, there it is. We had our Carl's Bait and Tackle, the online gigantic company versus the local tackle store. Where do you stand? Where's your preference? Where's your nostalgia? Because I know for me, it's always a tackle store. And on that point, what brings you the most joy? Shopping online or shopping in a store? If you happen across a tackle store, do you always want to stop? Because I definitely do. So my heart's always in the physical brick and mortar tackle stores. And I love to shop local and I love to support local whenever I can. And I recommend you guys do exactly the same thing if you have the opportunity where you live. And if not, when you're traveling, go to local tackle stores. It's awesome. Now, credit where credit's due. Online tackle stores are amazing because when you need stuff, you can just, dang, get it. Go to Tackle Warehouse, you can buy anything that exists in fishing, which is pretty phenomenal. So where do you stand? Hit me up in the comments, let me know. Hopefully you got something out of this unboxing, maybe some ideas for ways that you can spend all your hard-earned money just like I do, and maybe other ways that you can get in trouble with people in your life, like I do. I'm pretty good at it. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell, and also smash the like on this video, and then come back for Aggressively Average Anglers. We are coming at you soon. It's gonna be a massive giveaway on that first episode, so I'd love to see you there and talk to you in chat. We'll catch you guys on the next video.